to show you is how to make a wireless system to control your hoist. It's a pretty straightforward system. It's not too difficult. People will try and explain it as if it's absolutely phenomenally crazy. It's not crazy. And I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, first of all, I have to uh, give a shout out to my sponsor who gave me my brain juice to make this possible. You know, it has to be damn cold. It can't just be cold. So you definitely need one of those if you want to think. Tony Conley. Right, um, anyway, all joking aside, here we go. I've got my pendant switch for my hoist. I've opened it now, just a standard pendant switch with an isolator. Where does he stop? Or up? Or down? Double pull, double throw switch with a capacitator. I wanted to make a separate, a separate circuit so that I would, I could use this separately. But I'm having trouble sourcing this capacitator. Well, eBay doesn't have one. So anyway, what we're going to do, here's the schematics I drew up. This is going to be my, my power switch, my isolator, my double pull, double throw switch, my capacitor. So I want to do is I want to tap into them terminals on the double pull, double throw switch and transfer them onto a double pull, double throw relay switch, which means I can do it electronically. I can open it electronically 12 volt. So uh, this is the way it is. On most of these, you can get a multi-tester and test it. But this is how I found mine worked. The two middle pins, like most double pull, double throw, DP, DT uh, switches are, the two are the feed. The two middle are the feed. So whenever uh, you say press up, number two, number one, number five, and number four will all connect. So we have our feed. We transfer that to a relay. Two relays. One for each top of the switch. So number one, number four, we're putting it in the top of a 12 volt relay. Number five, number two, we're putting it into the middle. And then we're going to get our RF wireless relay system. And what we're going to do is we're going to wire it 12 volt. We're going to put a 12 volt feed in here. A 12 volt, volt feed out. We're going to wire it into relay one. So relay one it's going into double pull double throw relay one so what happens is i press number one power comes off the relay on the wireless relay system goes into double pull double throw relay which i will have connected to the circuit board i'm going to make I'll, i don't have the relays right now but we'll be here in a couple of hours so i'll have relay one there relay two there and the wires that are tapped will be tapped into here i'll show you as i make it so the feed goes into both relays. So number five will be replicated on both relays on the second set of terminals down. Relay two, the same. Relay, the bottom ones, which are the feed, the co which feeds the coil, coil one, will come off uh, relay one on the wireless remote. Relay two will be going into double pull, double throw relay two. And then number six, number three, the same happens, the top and the bottom. You switch the switch one way, these two pins connect. You switch it the other way, these two pins set the pins. That's why it's called double pull. There's two pulls here, and double throw, which means it throws it each way, giving you a total of six six pulls. So, if you just look at the schematics, I'll put them in a PDF and I'll send them to whoever wants it at the end. That's it. Just study this, and this is how it works. I'll show you what I'm going to do. I have my hoist. I've already welded it. T bar brackets onto it. I put these wee geared geared wheel systems. This is from a track. You will see that they go along. What I'm trying to do is get a bolt mounted there somewhere. Say, I'm going to have my my uh, remote system, my 12 volt supply, and my prep board with my circuit soldered on. And th they're all going to be mounted in this box. Or I could use the four the four. Uh, remote relay, whatever, whatever works out best. But my, my problem is, on this hoist, as you can see on the box, two wires comes out the bottom. Now because I have a small tolerance from my track to my kayak, which this is actually for, I had to remove these two wires and put them on the side. Now whenever I wire up this remote system, what I could possibly do is have this pin switch 
it mounted to the side and the wires going in here straight forward you know everything's out the road but I still want to manually control this if I have to override the remote control or if say something fails I can still manually do it so to do that what I need to do is get six wires coming in each sides of this running up the length of this about two and a half three meter cable and up in here of a wire connected to each one of those terminals so the best what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two twin and earth cables which means there's three cables in each 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 one so six cables it's neat tidy I could use a seven pin say like a trailer cable but no I have the stuff there's no point going and buying more so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my multi tester because there's a capacitor connected to these terminals the capacitors acts like a large battery it holds energy to start the motor I want to discharge it I don't want to take this apart and start messing about and tap into it and then get a shock so what you'll do is you'll get your multi-tester or a light LED anything and just discharge it hold the two ter terminals of the capacitor discharge it take spin these off and tap into them so I'll, I'll, go, I'll go to my next step, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tap into these, bring a cable here, and then I'll come back. So, we've tapped into the wires of the double pole, double relay switch. What I've used is, as I said, two, three, well, they're actually twin and earth cables, each uh, insulated. So I've wired two separate in, I've assigned one A, one B. What I've done is, whilst I was writing it down, because on my diagram, I have stated these at uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I drew on each one of these sleeves 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I assigned uh, one, for instance, the earth of A. I assigned blue to number 5. And brown to number 4. So on A, num I know where they are. Cable B, same story. So now I know where they are, so what I need to do is, I've cable tied them right up. We're starting to be, get a mass of wires, but it doesn't get sorted. I need to plug these into the junction bolts. I need to take in my power supply that's going to come into the hoist, because what I'm going to actually have to tap into it for my 12 volt power supply for my relay and wireless system. So, in the meantime, Thankfully, these are the wee relays, they're low profile, uh, what are they, 8, eight uh, yeah, 8 amp, 250 volts, alternating current, uh, 30 volts, direct current, so these are quite great wee small relays which will fit onto my board. So, once we, I'm going to pop rivet my box on now, take my main supply in, start and tidy it up, we'll get a look and we'll move on to making the circuit. Well, we have a junction box on, we have it pop riveted, I put a couple of cable ties on before I did pop rivet it to uh, hold a few components on, and I have sketched out my outline of my circuit board with copper, which, with my relays, which I will I'll cut all this off after I get soldered, but just keep me right, so I'm going to wire it, copper it, create the circuit, and then uh, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, before we go on to soldering the board, I just want to show you these. These are uh, spade head connected relays. They're a lot larger than the low profile board ones, but do the same job. These are 10 amp, these are 8 amp, 8 amp, amp uh, This was 250 volt alternating current, these are 240 alternating current. They're, they're, they're still well within the range. Uh, 28 for direct current, as for the low profiles are 30 for direct current. But as I said, more than enough what you need. So anyway. We're just connecting the same as is DPDT relay 1, DPT relay 2. You just follow the schematics. You'll be putting, uh, connecting number 4 in there, number 1 in there, number 6 in there, number 3 in there. As for the feed cables, we'll be bringing our 5 in here. We'll be putting a jumper cable over to relay 2, and a jumper cable over from terminal 2 to ter terminal 2 and uh, double pole, double pole relay 2. So this is what you're going to look like, look like here, 4, 1, 6, 3, cable in each one of, uh, and sorry, and 5 and 2, the jumper cables, 
your uh, power supply for your 12 volt trigger of your uh, wireless relay straightforward simple so anyway if that's where you want to go not more simpler no plateboard but a little larger but it's all part of the fun I'm just going to go ahead with the plateboard because it's just it's more fun it's a bit more a bit more fun on it okay so we'll move on to our next step now right I made the circuit yesterday evening but I had to stop because uh, I drank too much brain juice and uh, all of a sudden I just couldn't think anymore for some crazy reason but anyway this is what we've done we've got relay one we've got relay two we, these are the two speed pins five and two we took five put a bit of solder down put it into the corresponding terminal on relay two and the same with two down down and we put it into the corresponding of relay two we took the two top pins of relay one which were four and one we connected them we we got our let's see where we're for one four and one were in cable a earth and brown Earth brown. Uh, we got the, the second relay and we put in six and three on B. B six and three was the blue and the earth, blue and earth, and that was it. Pretty straightforward, simple we uh, circuit, nothing too crazy there. What we've done is we've connected in three wires to the coil to trigger the which opens the relay. We've put the positive one in here, relay one. We've put we've attached. Or the ground, sorry, the ground onto relay two. We just put a bit of solder, just just join them together, and we put another wire onto relay two for the positive. So these are the two trigger wires to open and close relay, and this is the ground. So as you can see here, we put in a ground. Let's hold this steady, and as it goes up, with this one. And she goes down with this one. So that shows us our, our circuit is working. Um, what we're going to do now is we're just going to put the circuit in, tidy it up, put in our RF uh, receiver. Now the RF receiver, as I said before, I'm using this 12. This is a two one which I will be using the two relays I'll be using. Or I'm going to get out my trusty breadboard. If you're into electronics or messing about, or do it. Usually one of these, these are fantastic, this, this is so nice for prototyping. So we're going to get my breadboard out. And I'm going to test both these relays for, and I'm hoping these are these two frequencies aren't the same. I'm hoping, now they probably will be, but I'm hoping they're not, because if they aren't, I can use these two nasty, tidy Chinese remotes, and uh, I can build something, put them into a nice controller, and tidy it all up. So, anyway, circuit made wire into my uh, receiver power supply just take my power supply that's us all good and well so we'll move on uh, to that next stage now well that's the, the circuits built completed everything's working I went to the, where the 4 relay transmitter opposed to the 12 because uh, well for two reasons one it was a different frequency another 4 block I have and number two there's no point having 10 relays and they're doing nothing it's a waste of a good 12 12 relay re unit uh, as I say the everybody says you should future proof everything which is true but there's still two relays and there uh, there's still two relays if I ever want to add anything to it the only one thing I may add to it is an isolator uh, like an isolator switch to isolate everything if, like for an emergency stop but as I said here we go here we've got the feeds in here from the pendant into the relays, out the relays, the, the trigger wires for the relays, the power wires uh, to, to turn them on and off, coming off the transmitter. Uh, you may think that's a bit brittle, but it's not really. It's a 12 volt DC or AC DC converter. It's the same as any plug, like your phone charger, only it's 12 volt. Now it's not plugged in, it's something else that looks open. It, it, I've got three skins of heat sink on it, uh, heat shrink. It, it's going to do no harm, and it's same as a N9. ACDC converter, it's doing the exact same job. I haven't put a, a fuse to protect this here wireless unit, which, well, actually, I could do that. I, sh I should do that. It's not hard to put another name fuse in it. Um, everything everything doesn't look great. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's not like opening a DVD player, you know, there's wires and stuff, but it's doing its job. It's, you know, it's working. You know, I can use my pendant switch. So, Try not to squish the remote. Down. Up. We can use our uh, 
a little fob. Oh, sorry, I'm trying to put it up. So it's working the way it should. So that's working the way it should. That's that's happy. So this was an extremely fun thing to build and an extremely fun thing to uh, design. I really enjoyed designing this little board, even though it was pretty straightforward and simple. But I was not knowing how to do it and working out how to do it, and then physically doing it and it works you know there's a there's a sense of accomplishment and it's something every time you think there's bound to be an easier way to do this there is an easier way to do it someone hasn't just found it yet you have to find it you have to you have to find there is easier ways to doing everything just you need, you need to get that that get up and go to just figure it out and that's what we've done today and uh i'll show you how to how that what this system's going to do i originally planned to put the video of it working before I show you the tutorial on how to actually build it. Now I've just got this out roughly here. I've got a track system which looks like this here, this, this here thing here. It's for like barn doors or big heavy doors with wee runners on it. There's wee wheels in here, joint here, there'll be a bolt coming down here. This is going to be the top hinges of the glide door system as such. So that's going to be in here and this is going to be the hoist say I built today. Hoist one, I've still another hoist to build. Well, not to build, but the circuit to build for it. So, but let's say the hoist I built today is going up, down, up, down, up. Well, this secondary hoist, which I haven't received yet, is going to go in, out. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to bring this the wire cable on it around a couple of strands or around the axle, the wheel as such. One down a pulley, to be another pulley, and connect it to this connect it here and then as I say it's coming around the pulley and connect it to this other so whenever I press up and down it's going to pull this in and out and and out as I say I'll pull up a, a small door just about enough room for the hoist and the kayak but it goes through I never designed the shed around I designed the shed for the kayak but I never designed it for the hoist uh, so anyway it'll go in and, that, and that's all good and well and uh, as I say any questions or anything, don't be afraid to ask and I'll definitely help out. As I say, it was such an enjoyable wee thing to do. And now I'm just going to start and make another circuit for my secondary hoist. So that's me finished.